morning everyone. I'm Deborah Kozlovic and I'm a Creative Memories Independent Advisor from Australia. First of all, welcome everybody to my channel and thank you for subscribing. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do so today and I promise that I'll show you some different ideas and different techniques of using the Creative Memories tools and papers and using up those scraps. So today I want to share with you a layout that I use with the square tile punch which is one of our recent new punches and in this collection with the design that's here now I use the silver and gold designer paper collection. So that was done with that and then I backed it with the black shimmer. So with this layout today, I'm going to be showing you and I will be using Q the Blue. I also will be using some of the Q the Blue embellishments. Of course, the square tile punch. And the papers that I've decided to use with my layout today is this gorgeous, like it's like a flower looking um, Mandela effect and then you've got just like a um, a brush stroke using you know from the dark to the light so we'll be using that one and I also will be using to coordinate with that is a navy cardstock the other things that we will need to make our layout today is your 12 inch trimmer I will also be using a decorative blade, so I will use the scallop blade, which I also did on the previous layout on the edging when I've done these strips here. I've actually added a bit of a scallop on the side just to give it a nice effect. So I will be using the scallop blade. Also, of course, the square tile you also need a black lead pencil and just your normal adhesive that you would normally use. Repositional tape is good to use so that way if something's not in the right spot you can um, lift it up and reposition it. So to start off with we're going to use the straight blade and with the first steps this paper is you know it doesn't go a certain way on either side so I can just normally just put that in and I'm going to trim it at four inches by 12. I'm going to cut another one at four inches by 12 and that's all we would need with the trimmer. So then we have our two outside pieces and then you have your middle piece. So if I just put this onto the cardstock to see which way I want to have mine. So I'm thinking that I'm going to use it something like, get something like this. So we want to take our two end pieces, the, the one that you will be using. So now I'm going to bring in the square tile punch. And you need your pencil for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it in the square tile. And then I'm just going to leave probably about a quarter, if that, maybe just a little bit less on the edging overhanging. And then I'm going to just line that up punch and before I move my punch I'm just going to do a little pencil line here you can rub that off so then when I feed that back through I'm going to line up my pencil line that I just did on the opposite side to the edging of the punch so I've got the edging you can actually do that. It might be easy to do it when you just hold the punch down so it's in place and do it pencil line and punch. So 
So we're just gonna line it up again at our pencil line, hold it in, draw our line. Oops, forgot to punch and punch. So we're gonna feed it back through and we're on our last one. And then we're just going to punch. So now we're going to do the opposite side, but because I want it matching up, so I'm just going to flip it over and then making sure that I've got my first punch lined up with the punch on the front of your punch here to where you've punched out. I'm confident that looks lined up. I'm hoping that it is correct and then I'm just going to do another pencil line and then punch. So then I'm going to feed it back through, holding that down, doing a pencil line and punch. So lining that up again, holding it, pencil line and punch and now the last one you're just lining it up with your pencil line and punch so if I bring back in my cardstock now as you can see how effective that looks so now we're going to follow the same steps these punch out tiles, you need to keep those. Now we're going to move on to our, our next four by 12 piece of designer paper. And we're going to do exactly the same steps as we just did with our first one. So we're going to place it in and then doing a pencil line and then punching. So now we're on to our last punch on our second strip. So then as you can see, you've got your eight punch outs. And then we've got our squares here. So bringing in back that cardstock again. So I have all these little bits. So now I'm going to bring back in the trimmer and I'm going to change to my decorative blade. And then I'm just going to trim off a one eighth, oops, a one eighth of an inch. So onto our next dotted line to give it a nice edging so I'm going to do that on both sides so I'm just going to start up the top just holding it in place so it doesn't move on me so I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side just putting it on that dotted line, starting from the top and trimming. Oops, there's a cut all the way through. Hopefully I can just pull it apart. Oh, yep. I think we've got it. So now I'm going to do the same to our other piece, lining it up on that dotted line, starting from the top, just holding it in place so your paper doesn't move. Oops. Just in those tiny little grooves, I mustn't have pushed down hard enough. So then doing the opposite side now, holding it in place and giving it a trim. So 
So while I've got my trimmer, I'm going to take out my decorative blade and put back in my straight blade so I don't forget. So now I'm just going to put the trimmer aside. So bringing in my layout now, just going to take all those little tile pieces off. So now I'm going to bring in my tape runner and my repositional tape. So I'm just going to put some repositional tape on the sides, on those thin sides, just to hold it in place. So then I'm going to use my tape runner now. Just finding where I didn't place it from the repositional. So now, as close as I can to the edge, because you've got to remember that you want to have a gap in between when you place your next four by 12. Oops. So you want to place it closest to the edge as you can because you want to place that next bit of paper which is your 4 by 12 piece in the middle. So I'm just going to put that as closest to the edge as I can. Still giving it a nice edging. And looking at this cardstock, the cardstock is actually a little bit bigger than... The designer paper it's only probably about a one eighth of an inch but i'll go back through later and just give that a nice little haircut on the side so it all matches up so just adhering down this second piece punch out now and also once you adhere these pieces down you can go back through and rub out your little pencil lines. So I'm just lining it up on the edge. I'm just gonna move that one a little bit over. Lining it up. So as you can see, it gives it a nice edging. So now the next piece, I'm going to adhere this one down in the middle. And with the other one, this is the one that I actually used for my photo. Actually, I need to go from the top piece on my photo because I wanted to leave the nice decorative tile squares open so it actually completed the layout. And with the nice decorative edge that you've got on the side, you know, you don't need a lot of embellishment clusters or stickers or anything like that. I think that's why on the other one, I just put, you know, like that nice wording and just a few um, embellishments on. So now I'm going to get my tiled squares. So I'm going to bring in this Ubri silicon mat that Creative Memories have brought out. It's really, really good. So if you were the lucky ones that actually purchased one of these, um, it's really good with the repositional tape you know, not sticking on your paper when you're, you know, like adhering it. So what I'm going to do is, I just put that on the wrong side. I actually want to put the repositional tape on the flowered side. So now that I'm on my last couple of tiles to go, I'm just going to line those two up. And as you can see now, looking at the layout, how effective it's made this design. 
and how it's come together. So as you can see, just by looking at it now, how effective it was made, like punching out those square tiles and then flipping that tile over so then it's matching within the middle bit. And with this one, I figured that it looked nice with just that one photo in the middle. I guess you can put a couple or you might want to cover up, you know, that design that we have placed on the page layout. But because it looks so nice and so effective, I didn't want to cover it. So you can actually put, you know, like a 5x4, two 5x4 photos in the middle there. Or you can just have the one photo as I've done in my sample layout. So I'm just going to look through the Q the Blue embellishments. I haven't actually looked at these as yet. So this is a first with us both. So never stopping uh, exploring. I love this. You make me smile. So they've got some nice heading titles here. So Hampson for a mail page. Remember this. A glorious day, my hero, family fun. So, I mean, it has got some nice tiles and nice headings that you can actually use on your layout. And then if I go back to the embellishments, I know they have some... Some nice little gems, some blue gems that we could use. Um, they also have some tags. And then you've got some nice little shapes that you can actually layer your title on. So we've got some nice little ones. I like the little tag. Clashes a little bit with that. And then if I open our next one, I've got some more. So we've got the nice squares with the tile sort of like pattern on there. So now deciding on what kind of embellishment cluster that I would like to put on this layout. So we're just going through to see what matches. And with the colour coordinating, you know, like with our designer paper that we used, I do like the glorious day. And I love this. And then we have, have a darker one. No bit too dark so just playing around and just going through to see what works that clashes I do like that one there that blends nicely that one's a nice one if I'm gonna do my heading I can actually do you know maybe put that off the side and then have glorious day that clashes with that bringing in one of those tags and then if i have a photo in the middle so many choices so many colors to choose from I think I like the darker one. I think I'm going to go with the darker one and then have a glorious day there. Then, what else do we have? Yeah, I think I might go something like this. Yeah, maybe just putting a, two titles, one up the top, one down the bottom. And then having my photo in the middle. Um, for your photo width, you would have to 
probably cut that down to three and three quarters and then you can still have it uh, six inches long but just remember that your middle piece is a four inch by 12. So I hope you enjoyed my little video today using the square tile and making a nice little sort of like border edging on either side and placing your photo in the middle. Um, this designer paper that I've used today is Q the Blue and on my sample I've used the silver and gold. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, any questions, please just drop me a comment and I'll answer you accordingly. Um, thank you for watching today. If you're interested in, you know, seeing my other videos, you can subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out and push that subscribe button. That'd be great. Until next time, happy scrapping, my friends.